Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're going to be checking out the new Gator Squadron from Infinity. So for those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you'll know that one of my main goals this year was to actually get a proper game of Infinity in. Given that we're in December and it's still talk at this stage, it's probably not going to be happening till next year at this stage. But I am still building my Nomad fleet up because this is the fleet that I want. Um, this is also a follow-up to a, another video that I did seven months ago for the CO cast. COCast is a newer injection molding technology that's available. The initial batch of COCast that was released was very, very soft. Uh, the community was really unhappy with it because it was really hard to clean up your mold lines and so forth. It's not quite as bad as PVC like your pre-build stuff, um, but it certainly was a different kettle of fish entirely. People did have different experiences with it. I didn't really have too many problems with it, honestly. But the, the, it is a legitimate thing. I've also seen a couple of people out there when they've come across miscasts try to blame that on the COCast technology and a reason why it should be banned from the industry and like really extreme points of view. It's worth remembering that miscasts is something that happens in all miniature technologies with the exception of maybe 3D printing because you don't, that, that's not how that works. You get other problems instead. Um, but given that there are, are reviewers out there trying to push that false piece of information as a problem with the technology, I thought it was worth bringing up because it's not a fault of the technology at all. That is false information. That is something that can happen with all miniature sculpting processing. Sorry to interrupt the video, but I want to tell you about the competition that we're running through our Patreon. For every month of support you give our Patreon, from now until April next year, you will receive one entry into the competition that we're running to win a Shaltari fleet for Drop Fleet Commander. That includes a Shaltari Dreadnought, a Shaltari Starter Set, a Shaltari Frigates Box, and a Shaltari Cruisers Box. All of this will be sent to one winner. This winner will be drawn at random on our fourth anniversary, which is recorded at the beginning of April. For us to be allowed to send this to you, you need to fit two categories. You must be living in a country where it's legal for me to post you something from Australia. You also must be living in a country where it is legal to win competitions. If you do not live in a country that meets these criteria, then I do apologise. There's nothing that I'll be able to do and I will be forced to redraw it. Please consider supporting us. We'd really appreciate it. All of this was purchased with my own money. No Patreon funds were used for this. None of this is sponsored. I purchased this personally. All right, and here we are on the front of the box. So this is something for regular Infinity, not for Code 1, uh, at least as far as I understand, because if it was Code 1, it would be in the black box. Um... It's a really gorgeous looking mini in all of the artwork that I've seen. Um, I've been looking forward to getting my hands on this for quite a while. Uh, given that this is the new formula, the new formula is supposed to be much better when it comes to getting rid of your mold lines and so forth. Whether that is the case is something we will find out today. So let's get a look at some of the detail on this. First and foremost, this is an injection point, so that's fine. Um, we don't have any severe mold lines on this particular piece. There is one running down just here. It doesn't show up on camera very well. But there is one, so we will be able to test that a little bit later. Mold line is fairly minimal on my copy though. No injection faults that I can see at this stage. I know there is one particular piece in this kit that has had quite a few problems in that regard. I will point that out when I get to it. 
um, just because it's a difficult piece to cast properly. But again, that's not a fault of the technology in any way, shape or form. Um, and people should not be spreading that information because it's not true. Um, it is a fault of casting, not of COCast itself. Nothing super concerning in the way of mould lines on this. Which I will say is slightly disappointing because I wanted to... Oh no, here we go. We got one here. So we'll be able to test on there. So this is one of the pieces that people have been having issues with. These bits here. Do have a little bit of mould lines around the crotch. So there's another piece that I'll be able to test out. Mold lines is pretty impressive on this particular kit. I like, there's not really a lot of them. A little clean up around the crotch. But there's definitely some flashing and some clean up that will need to be done. And that's where we used to have issue with the original, the original formula that was being used by COCast. It's good to see that um, improvements were being made so early too. Because, well... It was less than 12 months after the release of the product that it was announced that things were being improved. So, But again, that's, that's, an, that's a CO cast thing, not a Corvus Belly thing. It's not actually their technology. It's something they have purchased to use for their game. Right. Looks like we've got a couple of... I think this is for the shoulders, by the look of it. They look like shoulder joints. Seems to fit in quite nicely. I don't know ex exactly if that's... It might also go this way. No. It's definitely that one. Not quite sure what that is at this stage. So that's another thing that we'll have to come and find out later. Nice sculpting though. And that is the pilot's arms. That's one thing I really do like about the tags in Infinity is that you actually see how they work. As opposed to like dreads and stuff, dreadnoughts and stuff, like where you don't really see how they work from the insides, uh, depending on the world view. Um, like you can actually see the pilots in these kits and I really, really like that they do that. So this kit, has th this bag has another piece in it where we get some issues. I believe it's this piece. All mine come out nice and clear though. Really clear actually. Couple of pieces that'll need to be snipped off, but again, I'm not concerned about that. That's part of that's just part of the casting process. We've got our head here. Kind of a very different head sculpt. It doesn't really look like there's not really clear eyes or anything in this. I mean, it's a robot, so that doesn't really matter, but it's just a little bit different. One thing I will say is I don't really get why it's called a gator. I don't really see how it's an alligator at all. It's just nitpicking more than anything else. They go on the arms, I believe, somewhere. Again, mine's nice and crisp. I don't have any casting issues there. My other arm. I've really got almost nothing in the way of mould lines on these kits. That They're turning out really nicely. I do have some mould lines, which is good because I want to be able to test if this new formula works as it's supposed to. But the fact that there is not that much in the way of mould lines is very impressive. Very impressive. All right, I'll try and get us set up and I will be back with you. What's happening? We've got a couple of tools. I actually like to use these mould screen lines. Scrapers, no, the, the mold line scrapers, I actually quite like these. Uh, you don't need to buy the Citadel one, there are others out there. Uh, I obviously have a file, this is obviously the original traditional way, 
And I also have a knife uh, because you can always use the back of these knives or a blunt knife instead of doing a scraper. So obviously you could cut this off. I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, this doesn't look good. So this is exactly the sort of thing that people were complaining about with the first version of this. Um, and as you can see, like, it doesn't really matter. Like, I'm sitting here with the scraper at this point. You just saw me trying to use the knife, the back of the knife, which is, just, this is just a stronger version of that, basically. Um, the file really doesn't do anything either. It still has that rubbery feel. Um, i got to admit, I'm disappointed. CAOcast had told us that this new formula was going to fix this problem. It very clearly has not. It feels exactly the same. Um, I got lucky on my first time around because the casts that I got didn't really have any huge egregious... I mean, even this looks really nice, don't get me wrong. But, look, you can see me doing this here. All it's doing is flexing and moving around. It doesn't seem to make much of a difference at all on that. It's very disappointing. If I was Infinity, I'd be very up. If I was Corvus Belly, I'd be very upset. So, all in all, what did I think of the kit? I mean, the kit itself, the, the finished result looks really, really nice. But there's definitely a couple of things about this kit that we need to discuss. First and foremost, when you start cutting stuff out of this, it becomes way more obvious. This is still extremely rubbery like it's not quite as bad as the old one but this does not feel like plastic like corvus belly set sorry so that's the mini built not painted obviously but it's built um i have some mixed opinions some positive some bad i mean first and foremost the thing looks beautiful like it really does um it is a f it's a straightforward ish killed to be kit built to build I still think Corvus Belly needs to start doing instructions for their minis. As much as most of us are fine, there are people that are going to struggle with these kits. Because, I mean, it's straightforward-ish, but I wouldn't say it's easy. I mean, I certainly didn't have trouble. But I think somebody coming into the hobby that was new would certainly have trouble. Uh, and that is something that they should be trying to address, given that they do want new people to be able to play their games as well. But the thing we need to talk about is this CA cast. So first and foremost, like the details on this mini are all cast spectacularly. I don't have any miscasting in mine. I know that other people did. And again, that's not a problem with CO cast. That's a problem with all casting. It's something that happens with metal and resin as well. Uh, less often in hard plastics. But I'm sorry. But this stuff is just as rubbery as the old stuff. Um, it, it's not entirely obvious until you start cutting into it. Like This is going to be a very good example. Like This is extremely rubbery, which is why people had so many problems with the mould lines to begin with. Uh, you, you can still slice them off, but when it comes to actually cleaning up your models... Honestly, no, I don't think it's gotten any better at all. Um, I was told that this is definitely supposed to be from the new batches of things. Uh, and if it is, I think Corvus Belly should be making a complaint because the product is not what was promised to them. That is my opinion. Uh, because this is no different from the original stuff. It still feels exactly the same. It's still exactly the same problem. It's really hard to clean up. But don't get me wrong, but this mini is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. You can't give CoCast the, the, the credit for that, though. That's Corvus Belly's sculptors. I still think that CoCast is ultimately going to become something very important to the industry. I 
I still don't think it's there, though. Mixed opinions. Um, still looking forward to painting it up. Still glad that I've got it. I'm not the biggest fan of metal minis to begin with, so there is somewhat of a bias there, I suppose. But, yeah, look, metal, plastic, resin is really irrelevant in this case. Seacast has some faults that they really need to look into if they're going to become a major player in the game. Um, nice looking mini. Bit of a pain to build. You've made it through to the end of another video. Your next mission is to hit subscribe and comment down below. If you'd like to reach out to the team, consider doing that, getting tabled at gmail.com. Consider subscribing to our Patreon. For only $2 a month, you get early access to almost every single video that we do. Our most active social media is facebook.com slash getting tabled. It's where you'll find everything first. There's also a Discord. There's an invite on screen right now. If you type that in, it'll give you instant access. If you're on Twitter or Instagram, you can find us at getting tabled. It's not the most active, but it's something we're trying to use more all the time. Come and check out Jason the Bruce at Twitch. He does both video game and hobby content. And of course, without question, play more games.